Well, er, we'll make sure. Sound, you see something on the mixer there? Amen. Okay, hopefully. I don't know what's going on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Amen. In-house and wherever you are. Amen. Okay. Anyway, let's all stand, and we'll read uh, Luke 13, verses 23 to 30. Tonight, we're going to go in. I apologize for that little bit of a technological glitch. We don't know what's going on. And, uh, but anyway, something unusual took place, but we're good here. You'll get the message, Lord willing, tonight. Amen. Verse 23 of Luke, Luke 13. Let me read this passage to you, and I, like I said, I'm going to read down to verse 30, okay? Then said one, uh, unto him, Lord, there are few that be saved. And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say, is risen up and has shut to the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying Lord Lord open unto us and he shall answer and say unto you I know you not whence ye are verse 26 and then shall ye begin to say we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets but he shall say I tell you I know you not whence ye are depart from me all ye workers of iniquity and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. In verse 29, And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last. Amen. Let's pray. Father, bless your word again. Bless this time together uh, tonight, Lord God. And again, just uh, meet with each and every need. Father, uh, I pray that uh, the, the message online, uh, Lord God, would be clearly heard and understood, Lord. Again, Father, just help us with the technology tonight to make that happen. And uh, thank you for each and every one uh, that are present here tonight. May you do a great work in our midst. And Lord, help us not to forget to direct all our attention unto you and, our, and the glory. God, all the glory belongs to you tonight. So, Lord God, help us to accomplish that. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And, uh, Connor, I need you to go to PowerPoint and find the one that says uh, the spectrum. You'll see that on the most recent. It's just one slide. So when I need that, if you can put that in the scene there, I think. I don't know if you can still add that in there. I think you can while we're recording, okay? If you can find that one that says Spectrum, and uh, I'm just trying to think if I, just make sure it's just a slide and it's done manually. There's only one slide, okay? Appreciate that. Okay, well listen, um, the last few weeks, uh, we have been talking about hell. Um, this is not a subject um, that, how can I say, as I've said, previously enjoy talking about but it's in the Bible and as your pastor tonight uh, as I preach through scripture by scripture uh, I am I am forced by the Lord as I preach and teach to cover everything that is covered in the Bible and it's good for me as a pastor to make sure that we don't leave anything out we're good thank you so much Connor uh, not yet, I'll tell you in a minute, but just get it ready on the scene there. And uh, so anyway, um, but it's important, it's important. Um, and I think it's important for God's people tonight to uh, appreciate what you have. Uh, if you're saved tonight, you know Christ is Savior, listen, um, in the nicest way I can say possible, this is as close to a place called hell that you'll ever come to on planet Earth. Amen. For those who don't know Jesus Christ, this will be as close to, if you can call it heaven, which I can't, but this will be like heaven compared to where they will end up. And uh, so thank the Lord tonight. If you know Christ, you have received Jesus Christ, you have a home for you in heaven. And so we need to understand not only how to help people know the gospel and understand this matter about hell, Yes, every verse in the Bible is not about hell, but it needs to be made known. What are you being saved from? From what unto what? 
And of course, when someone comes to know Christ, not only are they saved from hell, but they also have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know about you, but I am so glad tonight that I am part of the family of God. The family of God tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're saved. You're part of God's family. And we're brothers and sisters in Christ for all those who are saved tonight and those who are online here. So the Bible tells us that it's also important for us to understand this as Christians. Amen. Because have we forgotten what we've been saved from? It's so important to understand that. You know, we, I, I believe this, folks. We are blessed tonight. Uh, we are blessed in so many ways. Um, I'd like to uh, focus on the spiritual blessings in Christ, but we surely do have a lot of material blessings living in Canada tonight, amen? And we should appreciate what we do have for the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And uh, so the previous couple of messages, if you go online, for those who are here and didn't catch those, uh, or those who are online right now, if you go back on this uh, playlist uh, on the life of Christ, you'll see on there a message on the existence and reality of hell. The existence of hell. It does exist. Yeah, you can come in, folks. Come in. And uh, if we can just help these folks here find a place here. Amen. We have folks that want to come in and make sure people are kind of uh, distance and so forth. If we can work that out, as long as you're in the same kind of, yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. What a blessing tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. It's good to have folks coming in. Amen. And uh, so we talked about that. We're not going to go through that again. But of course, we will probably mention in this message some things that are related back to that. Um, but, and then for the last couple of weeks, we talked about the necessity of hell. And again, our studies in Luke 16, where it talks about the rich man and Lazarus. So he said, well, why are we talking? Because I have to, I, I must teach and help folks understand this matter concerning hell and that you're saved from hell. Praise God. Amen. So anyway, and then tonight we're going to talk about the concept of hell. The concept of hell. And this will take a few messages, and there's three parts to, to this message. And like I said, tonight we'll focus on separation. And I'll explain that because some people, they limit it to just hell is separation from God, and that's it. No, no, it's a lot more than just separation from God. That's just one little part about hell. And so people need to understand that. And uh, so, but the other part will be association. And then the other part will be retribution. So we'll go through those three parts, not tonight. We're just going to focus on one matter concerning the concept of hell, and that will be separation, okay? And uh, so anyway, as we look at this, I want you to look at that passage that we just read a few moments ago in Luke 13, and then verse 28, in verse 28, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is, this, is a descri this is one of many descriptions of concerning hell. And when you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. So the matter of separation is taught right there. You're thrust out. Now, there, there's, there's more to this passage than I have time to develop, okay? Um, because sometimes you've got to understand that there are passages in, in the Gospels when Christ is teaching that have to do with the kingdom, uh, the kingdom on earth, amen? And I can't wait for King Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, praise the Lord. Um, and I can't wait for that time because you don't have to go to the polls and vote, amen? Uh, we're going to have the perfect king and the perfect Lord, and he'll do everything right he will be running everything on this planet according to the words of God. Amen? And I can't wait for that. Um, I know for a fact tonight, you know, I'll do my best as a Canadian citizen. Uh, you know, when election times come at, at the different levels of government to t cast my vote, and I'll, I'll pick the candidate that I believe, according to the scriptures, is the one that lines up as much as possible with the Word of God. Amen? There's no such thing as a perfect candidate. Amen? So you got to understand that. Some people think, oh, you know, this one is, yeah, don't put your hopes in man. Amen? They will fail us. 
We need to put our hope in Christ, amen, in the Word of God. So, but anyway, so, um, so Christ, this is speaking about the kingdom. It's speaking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but there'll be people thrust out of that kingdom. They'll be separated, okay? And uh, so as, as we get into this lesson tonight about the concept of hell, and we get into this matter of separation, uh, as I've said a few moments ago, it, it is not limited to just separation from God, okay? There is more. As a matter of fact, let me give you some, some, some things tonight. That's just one aspect. It's much more than that. The Bible mentions fire. Now, most people would understand that. Even the law say, well, yeah, those Christians, they believe that hell is fire. There's fire in hell. And uh, so anyway, and there's many verses for that. And I think we've already talked about that when we talked about the existence and reality of that place. And also the Bible says it's a bottomless pit. Okay, so, so we got these different levels and these different aspects uh, of, of this place. And it's, it's a bottomless pit. And the Bible teaches that. And again, I have a bunch of references for that. And again, uh, for those who have read the scriptures, you are quite familiar. But I want to take a few minutes and, and talk about this one aspect uh, before we get into more detail on the matter of separation and how it applies as we go through this thing, is this matter of outer darkness. Because if, if you're not understanding, um, there are people out there who do not w uh, want to believe in God or, or they think they have some legitimate reason for not receiving Christ and uh, they come up with all these supposed contradictions so the question behooves itself, if there's fire, how can there be utter darkness? Now, right? And that's a valid question. How can that be possible? Well, I have some answers for you. But I need to remind you of some things here. Um, that, you know, I believe the Bible is accurate. I believe the Bible, um, there are things throughout history where medical science and other matters of science, like for instance, Matthew Morey, uh, he is one of the ones that was responsible for charting the ocean currents a long time ago, before we had all this technology. Well, the Bible says it talks about currents. It talks about all of this. So he says, there's currents there, and I'm going to chart this and to help you know, the, 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 the shipping traffic across the Atlantic and the Pacific, and he did all this charting. Well, the Bible talks about that way back in the Old Testament, book of Job, book of Ecclesiastes, and many other places in the Old Testament. So the Bible is very scientific. It really is. And there's many other things that the Bible is, is accurate, and it is accurate. So, so if, if tonight you're saved, you know Christ, um, you have... Faith to believe in what Jesus did on the cross. Can you believe that everything else in this book is accurate? Right. Can, can, can you believe that tonight? Can you believe, it? like I've said so many times as pastor, Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God. If we can just get past that, if a person can get just past that and say, in the beginning, God, not in the beginning, evolution, but in the beginning, God. You know, I don't believe in, quote-unquote, theistic evolution. And, uh, uh, you, know, uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm glad there's people that are into intelligent design, but let's call it what it is, God. <laughs> God created this planet that we're living on, amen? And let's trust God with this thing. And uh, so anyway, so the Bible teaches us that, you know, when you study the scriptures, you can see these things. And it's a very accurate, it's very scientific. The Bible teaches us in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, that your thinking, your thoughts, and your ways, and my thinking and my ways are not usually in line with God. They're not usually in line with the Word of God. So when we come across something um, in our thinking, and a lot of our thinking that is contrary to the Scriptures comes from out there in the world. It comes from the news media, a lot of it, and a lot of it comes through social media out there. And it comes through, unfortunately, uh, in the public educational system from primary through university. 
You know, if you teach young people from primary age right through university that there is no God and that you're just an ev uh, evolutionary accident and you're just an animal on the same level of a dog or a cat, this is what you end up with in our society. This is the mess that we are in tonight because people uh, refuse to believe that God created man in his own image. And uh, because of that, and by the way, that's an attack on the foundation of our society. Because you would find if you studied history in Canada, history in the U.S. and other countries and different places in the world, that they were, their laws were formulated through the scriptures and they believed in God. I'm not saying everybody always preached and taught the gospel, but there are people, hey, it sure beats people who don't believe in God and to have people that do believe in this God, even though they might not have that relationship with him. I, you know, listen, I want them to be saved. Because just having a belief, a head knowledge in God is not going to save you. You must believe with your heart. You must put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Amen? So we got to make sure that we line up our thoughts, that we change our thinking and our ways to line up with the Bible. When you go over to Amos chapter 7, don't turn there. It talks about the Bible's like a plumb line. Okay? It's a plumb. Now, and again, I've mentioned this many times. I won't go into depth on this. But in building, if you want to make sure a wall is, is straight... Uh, or if you want to find, let's say, in this ceiling here, if I wanted to find right where that smoke detector is, I want to find the exact point on the ground. I want a perfect line to the line on the floor here. Let's say I want to build a wall. You run this, it's got a weight with a point. I made one in high school many, many years ago in machine shop. And, you know, you put a string on it. There's one, I think, downstairs. I know I have one at home. And uh, if you want to make, put a wall up, you want to find out where, okay, I know where I want it up here. And uh, let's see where that is down there. You, you'll know exactly on the ground where to start that wall, how to lay it out and everything, okay? God says this, this is the plumb line. You want to know if something's crooked or not? Read your Bible. Look to the Word of God. If you're going you're gonna to see what's crooked in this world. There's a lot of crooked things. The problem is if you're really influenced by all the things of this world, you may start to look at things in the way the world looks at them, and therefore you're going to be out of line here. Okay, so when we read, that's why it's important to read the Bible. In the book of James, we've talked about this before. The Bible says it's like you've got to look, at, look into the perfect law of liberty. Not just look at it like, oh yeah, I read those verses. Check, 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 done. Okay, we're done for today. Look into it. That means study it. That means give it some more meditation and thought. Look into it. <laughs> Look into it. And um, allow it to affect your life. That If God shows you, he calls this the mirror. Amen? This is the most important mirror. Now, listen, I'm for people, you know, comb your hair, look right, make sure there's no food on your face, you know, and dress right, whatever. I'm for all that stuff. But if there's one mirror you need to look at every day, it's this book right here. It's this book right here. The Bible says when you, look at, when you look at this with an open heart and you say, God, show me if there be any wicked way in me, Psalm 139. Show me, Lord. Please, God, show me. Amen? God, there's God. You, you, listen, honestly, today, can you honestly say that I am, I am doing everything according to the Scriptures? I, I doubt it. Amen? I, I, listen, we all have ways that we need to correct every day. It's self-correction. Amen? The Holy Spirit works on our heart. We read the Word and they say, oh, I need to make a correction in my journey, in my path today. Amen? You've got to constantly do that. So, and uh, so with this here, the Bible says also in 1 Corinthians 1 that, you know, God, uh, hath not God made, 1 Corinthians 1 20, hath God not made foolish the wisdom of this world? There's some stuff that the world says and you think, how are these people believing this stuff? They'll believe that, and it's so far-fetched, they won't believe this. They won't believe this, but they'll believe that stuff. It's like, whoa. And some of the things that they'll talk about are contrary to biology. <laughs> you know, you think, well, where are they coming from here? We are in a delusional state in our world tonight. We are. We are. The Bible says in the tribulation time that there would be a strong delusion. It's all, we got some of that going on right tonight. 
And then, so, and then he says, verse 21 of 1 Corinthians 1, that the foolishness of preaching, why? Because to save, save people, so people know the truth of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. So what the world elevates many times, they say, we're so, people think they're so wise, and, and the things that they're claiming wisdom in those areas in, many times are contrary to the teachings of the Word of God. Oh, we know this and we know that. But let me ask you this. Do you know God? Do you know him tonight? Do you know him as your Savior tonight? Oh, I got an education. I'm not against education. But you got to watch it, what you're, what you're taking in there. Amen? Garbage in, garbage out. That's G-I-G-O. <laughs> That's what we used to say back in the 70s and the 80s especially when computers were coming, and you put garbage in into a computer in a database, you're going to get garbage reports. God says, hey, you got to watch what you're taking in here. Amen? So, so, so do they have the slide up here? Is the slide up there? Is there a slide? He's going to get it up there. Oh, well, she's getting the slide up. You got the slide up? Go ahead. Amen. So people can see it. Let me read some things to you, okay? I got these quotes from different scientists. Um, Kansas State University, Rutgers University, here's a natural scientist. Um, I got three or four different quotes here, okay? So to help you, and by the way, I didn't say, I want, on Google, I want Christian scientists to give me the answers that I want again. I didn't do that. Amen? I didn't do that. So, it's been a long time since I took physics and chemistry. <laughs> it's been a long time. That was, that was back in 1974, okay? But there's still some of that in the brain up here, okay? You don't forget everything. Amen? But that's a long time ago. And uh, that's when I graduated from high school. So, anyway, um, Glenn Reese, PhD in physics. Hotter flames have predominantly shorter wavelengths. So they progress through red, orange, yellow, blue, violet, and ultraviolet. The last one will burn your retinas, which is why you don't look at arc welding flames, or the sun, or nuclear explosions. Rarely do we see deep violet colors in the hottest flames. Because our vision is not sensitive to these wavelengths. In front of you, you got a chart. The spectrum there in the middle is visible. The rest is not visible. But you can feel it. Yeah, right. On either end, infrared and ultraviolet, you feel it. Okay? You ready? Natural science scientist Noah Smith. Theoretically the hottest flame and also the coldest color will be black. Or should I say, it has no color, can't be seen by our eyes, as the absence of light is, is black, since the light is uh, chromatic, chromaticity, I can't even say it, of the black body radiation is infinite and will extend our passes, uh, extend our, uh, passes our color range or chromaticity. The coldest flame color will be black since the flame is so weak it barely produces light. So on either end, it's black. You see that on there? On there, here, wherever, at home, okay? You ready? Here is Ray Menon at uh, Rutgers University. All flames can be categorized as imperfect black body radiators. They emit energy in a broad spectrum. Infrared, what we call heat, visible light, and ultraviolet like the sun's rays, they give you a sunburn. The concept of the hottest requires radiant energy to interact with something. Let me skip down, watch this. Listen to this. Energy is related to wavelength in an inverse relationship. The higher the energy, the shorter the wavelength. The higher the energy, the shorter the wavelength. So, infrared radiation with the lowest energy will have a longer wavelength. 
You'll see that on the chart. Infrared versus ultraviolet. While ultraviolet radiation with the highest energy will have shorter wavelength. But notice, it's black. You can't see it. You can't see it. The human eye is designed only to capture a brief segment of the electromagnetic spectrum, ranging from red to violet. Anything outside of this is mostly perceived by our skin. Radiant heat, infrared, makes us feel warm, like when we are sitting near a fireplace, and ultraviolet radiation will char or tan or burn the skin. How about that? Amen? I know this is a science lesson. Maybe you didn't want to come for the science lesson, but I, I love, you know, these, these creation sites, different ones. There's ICR, and there's Ken Ham, and all these guys, and you know what? The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, I think, is that we should be ready to give an answer to every man that asks of the hope that's in us with meekness and fear. Right. Well, you know, I don't know. Okay, I would say this. Uh, I don't know the answer to that right now, but uh, would you give me an opportunity to come back and we can get together, um, and I'd like to sit down with you. Right. You know what? You say, Pastor, I really don't know a lot of Bible. I'll help you with that. Now, I know what this coronavirus deal and all this stuff, people are like, they're afraid to get near you. You know, I understand that. But this is the way the fears and phobias and the torments of our society right now. Um, but let's pre, pre-COVID, okay? You want to learn the Bible? Talk to people. Talk to people. Engage with people. Well, I'm afraid because they might ask me, that's my whole point. They might ask you a question you don't have the answer for, and that should drive you back in the Bible. That means you should be spending more time in the Word of God. And we don't have the answers because we don't spend enough time. Oh boy, you know, maybe pre-COVID, we knew the sports, my team, my favorite teams, we knew all the scores and, and who's running and who's, I mean, I think, are they doing something with hockey now? I think I saw a little board there somewhere. I'm not saying wrong for all that stuff, don't misunderstand me, but can we help people? Give them real help. I believe all of this. If we engage so much in sports and entertainment, I think it dulls our senses to the things of God. Yeah. It does. It, it, it kind of like puts us in a hypnotic state. It really does. When we need to just spend time doing things with family, talking to each other instead of, you know, um, here, we're going to sit at the table doing this all the time, you know? It's just, We really need to spend more time. And if you engage with people, again, pre-COVID, because right now it's like you can't get close to people. They don't want to get near you. I've given some tracks out. Some taking it. You know, but some people are like, no, 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 thank you. Whatever. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to hurt anybody or offend anybody. But we need to spend time. We need to have some answers. So, again, uh, uh, right, Ray Bennett. In short, the hottest part of the flame is right above the blue corona of the flame that you can see, and it is mostly ultraviolet radiation that will be the hottest, the most energy, which you can't see. You got that? Yeah. You understand? Oh, you know, I got one for you. How can there be flames in hell and it be darkness? <laughs> yeah. There you go. If you want this, I'll send it to you. You can do the study yourself. This is, this is not science falsely so-called. This is proven and tested science. Right. Evolution is not proven and tested. Right. And the world seems to grasp onto that stuff like that, but we've got some data here. Yep. Just a simple illustration. That's all it is. Amen? Let's look at one other thing. Um, and this one, I don't know who quoted this one. I couldn't find the source on this one. But it goes along with these other sources that I had. And I thought, I, I read, started reading this article. I said, oh, come on, I can't find a name on the page. Black is not even a color. I used to work at Eastman Kodak Company in Rochester, New York, years ago. Back in the 70s, from 1974 out of high school to 1977 when I moved to Niagara Falls. And when you work with light, you have two color systems. You got what's called additive color and you have a subtractive color. 
Yeah. One is the subtractive is cyan, magenta, and yellow. Yeah. And the additive is red, green, blue. Yeah. And with these things, you can make any color you want. Right. You can do any of that. It's just, it's amazing. Okay? So, black is just, it, it's not a color. It's the lack of color. As you see on both ends of the spectrum, infrared and ultraviolet. Is that right? Um, just as when there is light present, being the source of the colors, it produces colors. Deficiency of light results in blackness. On the other hand, white is a mix of all possible colors of the visible spectrum. You say, really? Yeah. Yep. Anyway, if you're not convinced, I don't know what else to say to you. Yep. But you should look into this. When people ask you these questions, outer darkness, yeah, hell, flame, yeah, I don't know that. How could it be? First of all, if you can get past the fact of just getting them to believe in hell, yep. before they go on the internet and try to find all the supposed contradictions in the Bible, supposed contradictions, <laughs> that's what people do. These people, most of them never read the Bible before. Right. Not, there are some. I, I, there are some. But a lot of them have never read the Bible from cover to cover, and they just go on the internet. Let me find some contradictions when I talk to this Christian at work, or Christian at school, or the Christian my neighbor. Amen? So let's not be full of fears, and let's uh, be bold as a lion, the Bible says. And, and listen, do your homework. Don't quote somebody or something, and all of a sudden you misquote. Get yourself in trouble, amen? You lose some credibility. Amen? Make sure it's tested, proven science. Amen? So, so hell's a place of thick darkness. Well, people, in the Bible says, are in flames. And neither of the, watch this, and the, so, but thank God, in heaven, Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light of heaven. And the city, Revelation 21, I'm going to quote two verses here. Revelation 21, 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Capital L, Lamb. Jesus. We just sang. That's why I said stepping in the light. I thought we got, we got to sing that tonight. You know, the world's in darkness. Did you know that? Yeah. They're in darkness. Revelation 20 through 5. And there shall be no night there. There's a song, no night. <laughs> oh, I can just hear that song. I better not sing it to you. I'll probably mess it up. Amen. No night there. They need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Oh, I can't wait for that day. My wife says, my wife likes, she didn't say these words, but in essence, when we say, oh, what's the Lord will come back? That's the last prayer in, in the Bible, the book of Revelation. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Yeah. Right. Right. Come on, Lord. <laughs> don't worry. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You know, John 17, Jesus says, uh, don't pray to take, take you out of this world. Pray to keep you from the evil. Right. You ever read that? That's the Lord's prayer. That's truly the Lord's prayer, John 17. <laughs> That's a tough one. So the Lord says, in his timing, amen? I like, I like what my mother was praying for my dad, but they, they ended up in glory before that. Uh, I hope I don't meet the undertaker before the upper taker, amen? Can't wait to see Jesus. I want to end a rapture, amen? Alive and remain. Doesn't matter if you're dead in Christ, you'll still be, look, we'll be resurrected, amen? Either way, we're in good shape. So this darkness will envelop the people in hell eternally. Eternally. Got to think about that. No, listen, I'm trying to be sensitive to the kids. Your own parents understand. This is teaching, Bible, and so forth. Amen? It's interesting how that many children are afraid of darkness. Isn't that right? When you were a kid, I'll admit, I was afraid of darkness. It's like... It's like the Bible says in John 1, 9, that he lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Do you know that you are, you are born um, with this knowledge and this understanding that there is a God? And Romans 1 teaches you have to be taught out of that belief in God. 
The Bible says their, their heart was darkened through brainwashing and all of this stuff that's going on in this world. There's no God. There's no God. You tell a child that long enough, they'll say, yeah, there's no God. You say, man, I got a Christian home and all that. And man, you got to work double and triple time to combat what's being taught through the educational system. And it, it's not like what it was when I was a kid. Us older generation, we have come a long way. A long way. But even some adults face this phobia of darkness. Amen? Since the loss of the world are children of darkness, 1 Thessalonians 5.5, 5, and love darkness rather than light, John chapter 3, verse 19, they will receive what they want, even though they don't believe it. They'll be in darkness forever. They will receive, they, they love darkness rather than light, the Bible says. So here's a word. I hope I pronounce it right. I stand to be corrected. Nyctophobia. Who knows what nyctophobia is? Scared of, the dead. Scared of what? Scared of the dead. Sc <laughs> 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 Amen. Scared of their extreme fear of night or darkness. Extreme. Are you ready? No, I'm just, I'm just saying this because, listen, folks, we need to. Are you glad? If you're saved tonight, are you glad you're saved? Amen. Man, I'm on my way to heaven. But these, these people in this neighbor, we got the windows open. You shouldn't shout or you shouldn't sing. No, forget that. We do this in the summertime. We got to open up. We'd be sweltering in this place. And I think, Lord, I hope the songs of of, of the saved and the songs of the redeemed. People in this neighborhood will hear that. You know? I mean, most of the churches in this end of Fairview, they've either moved up the hill away from this area, and this place down here in Fairview, all these buildings are going up all over the place, and we're still hanging in here. Yeah. <laughs> this church got sold, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. They're all being sold, and we're still here. And I get all these calls, not anymore, not lately, but man, I'll tell you before, we want to rent your building. I'm sorry, we don't rent it out. It's worship only. We want to rent your building. We want to use it for this. We want to use it for that. No, it's worship only. <laughs> I saved myself a lot of heartache and a lot of problems. Serious. <laughs> it's, it's a challenge. How do you say no to certain situations? Amen? So I saved myself that. No, we don't. Sorry, we don't. No, we don't. Sorry, we don't. Well, you're not a very good community neighbor. <laughs> Sorry. Nyctophobia. Are you ready? Extreme fear of darkness or night that can cause intense symptoms of anxiety and depression. A fear becomes a phobia when it's excessive, irrational, or impacts your day-to-day -day life. Being afraid of the dark often starts in childhood and is viewed as a normal part of development. Studies focused on this phobia have shown that humans often fear the dark for its lack of any visual stimuli. Now, just got to think, hell, what we just said, utter darkness, okay? So when, you, when we talk about this. In other words, people may fear night and darkness because they just cannot see what's around them. Did you get that? They don't know what's around them. Can we get a grip on this? The symptoms you may experience with nyctophobia are much like those that you would experience with other phobias. People with this phobia experience extreme fear that causes distress when they are in the dark. Symptoms may interfere with daily activities and school or work performance. They may even lead to health issues. Different phobias share similar symptoms. These signs may be either physical or emotional. With nyctophobia, symptoms may be triggered by being in the dark, or even thinking about situations where you'd find yourself in the dark. Like what? Physical symptoms. Trouble breathing. Racing heart rate. Chest tightness or pain. Shaking, trembling, or tingling sensations. Lightheadedness or dizziness. Upset stomach. Hot or cold flashes. Sweating. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, I, I have some of those, but you don't have nyctophobia. <laughs> but this these are some physical um, manifestations of nyctophobia. 
How about that? Emotional symptoms include this. Overwhelming feelings of anxiety or panic. An intense need to escape the situation. Detachment from, by the way, this did not come from a Christian source. Just want to let you know, okay? Didn't come from a Christian source. Some people, well, that's not the body guard from Christian. No. Nyctophobia. This is secular. Detachment from self or feeling unreal. Losing control or feeling crazy. Feeling like you may die or lose consciousness. Consciousness. I can't even pronounce this. Feeling powerless over your fear. Revelation 21 8. We're going to touch that verse, and I've got to watch our time here. But the fearful, I've kind of highlighted that in my notes. Fearful. And unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the things that they're afraid of here. For instance, people are afraid of what someone may say or do if they get saved. Do you know how many people have kept from being saved, coming to know Jesus Christ as their Savior because of being fearful? A parent, spouse, Children, teenagers, young adults, you know what the biggest influence factor is? Peer pressure. Do you know where a lot of that's coming through? Here. Instagram, TikTok. Supposedly Facebook is for us old fogies. Serious. But they got their other media. All right? Peer pressure. I, 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 want, to, I want to be like every... You, you need to be like Jesus Christ. Right. We're supposed to pattern our lives after Jesus Christ. And because of peer pressure, they have fear. Oh, I don't, if I go to that church, all my friends are scared to say, I saw you go in that church. Oh, you must be one of those Christians. Amen. Yeah, amen. Right. They're afraid. Kids are afraid. They want to identify. They want a crowd. They want to be accepted. Yeah. Isn't that right? And by the way, some adults are no different. Right. We want acceptance. By who? What do they represent? What are their values? Are they biblical? Right. We better be careful. Yeah. Your relatives, challenges there, eh? Classmates, coworkers, et cetera, et cetera. So, what else is in hell? We've seen already fire, we mentioned that, bottomless pit, outer darkness, wailing. Now, just think of the, what I just described about darkness. People are panicking in darkness. How about nyctophobia to the nth degree in hell? Do you understand that? You're never coming out of this place. It's forever and ever. Weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. Forever and ever. No end. And you're saved tonight. Do you appreciate what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross? You're on your way to heaven. You're saved tonight. If you know Christ, you have that relationship. This is Listen, God's done so much more for us, but this is, this is the ultimate. Being with him forever <laughs> and not spending a second in hell. Forever and ever. The gnashing of teeth that I just mentioned, I looked it up. Extreme anguish, utter despair, snarling, growling, and the sense of biting. You're in outer darkness, and you're burning. You're feeling the pain. By the way, the Bible doesn't teach annihilation. There are different cults and religions out there that teach that. That's not Bible. It's forever and ever. There's no annihilation. We've already talked a little bit about that. Okay, let's move on here. So, the Bible says the lake of fire is the second death in the book of Revelation. We've got to kind of wrap up here. So I want, I'm going to show you a couple, of, one, more, one or two more things, and we're done tonight. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. 
Now wait a minute. So here's those con contradiction people. They're all coming up now. Hey, the Bible just said there's a second death. It says once to die. Now right? What's happening here? There's a contradiction in your Bible again. <laughs> I have a book. There's books written to show you, to help you understand and study. By the way, without changing the text, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, that's a scribal error over there. That's a scrub. No, 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 no. There's no scribal errors in here. We got an accurate translation in our language. It's all good. Amen. So what's this thing about the second death? Let's go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 20. Yeah, we're on the home stretch here, okay? We're on the home stretch, and you'll be released from the humidity. Is it hot down there? <laughs> Amen. Humidity. By the way, you know, I, I live in southern Ontario. I lived in upstate New York. I lived in Denver, Colorado. I lived in B.C., Toronto, Montreal, born in Montreal. And uh, I love the Maritimes. <laughs> hot? Yeah, it gets warm, but I, it's, it's not like what it was in Ontario. And upstate New York, around the Great Lakes, there's like, oh, oh, no relief at nighttime. And then I think of that couple that has been coming out, amen, and they, uh, Lawrence came back, and anyway, he's, uh, came from Brazil. They're on quarantine. And you know what? It's hot there. It's hot there. Boy, I tell you, we are, listen, what do we go? Oh, this is nice. Could be worse, amen? Revelation chapter 20, watch this. By the way, Revelation 20, verses 1 through 7, talks about a thousand years. It mentions that phrase six times. There are people out there who do not believe there's a millennial kingdom. I don't know what they do with six times that God says a thousand years, a thousand years, a thousand years. Just in case you didn't get it the first time, I'll give it to you three more times. A thousand years, a thousand years, a thousand years. I don't believe in the millennial kingdom. I don't know what you're doing with the Bible. You've got to read it and study it and believe it. <laughs> so he says in verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, and such the second death hath no power. That's for those who know Christ. At the rapture, God, the Lord is going to take us out. Take, his take the bride out. Amen? By the way, God's not going to beat up his bride. He's taking his bride out before the tribulation time. That's a separate study. But some people, there's, there's, there's mid-trib and post-trib and pre-wrath. No, pre-trib. Right. That's a whole study in itself. Amen? Amen? God's not going to beat up his bride. Just, just trust me on that <laughs> without going through the whole study right now. And he says, so those people, us, if we're alive and remain, Amen? And those, of course, in the first resurrection who are in the graves, all the saved are going to be coming up out of the graves. Amen? Praise the Lord. And they shall be priests of God in Christ and shall reign with them a thousand years. Are you ready? Let's go down to verse 14. And the Bible says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. It mentions the second death. You say, what is the second death? We're getting there, Okay. But the Bible describes it right there. Revelation 21, 8. Next chapter, 21, 8. The Bible says, we already read this, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable murders and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, liars. Tonight, liars. That's in the same list with abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, and unbelievers. Hmm. Liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the Lord mentions this over and over again. There's other places. I'm not going to go through all those. Okay? So when people are lost, they end up right in hell when they die. They go immediately to hell. Just like someone who's saved, they immediately go to heaven. To, abs to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Just like that. You take that last breath. <laughs> You're in heaven with the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. No more. You've been released <laughs> from this planet. Amen. Thank God. 
But anyway, for those, the second death, you say, what in the world? You got to have some more explanation to this. Let me give you a verse. You know, the book of Revelation pr prior to that is one little tiny little book called Jude. Let me give you a verse in Jude. Jude, Jude verse 12, okay? Jude verse 12. There's, there's a bunch of things, you know, there's a whole study in here about apostasy and about false teachers and all this kind of stuff, but we're not going to get into that, okay? But I want you to see this verse. Verse 12, these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit that withereth, without fruit, watch this. You see what that says? What does it say there? twice dead you got it plucked up by the roots well let's 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 talk about salvation for a moment you were born physically whatever year that was mine was march 5th 1956 i don't know what time of day or morning i was born but it doesn't matter i was born physically jesus talked to nicodemus in john 3 he said ye must be born again so what he thought about was how can I go back in my mother's room, Jesus? Right over his head. He just, it went, whoop. No, no, no. We're talking about a second birth. He says, ye must be born again. You need a spiritual birth. Okay? So, for everyone on this planet, you need to be born again. And if you're not, you're going to end up in a place called hell. Everyone's been born. You know, the world, some of the people in the world say this. Well, aren't we all the family of God? No. Only by faith in Jesus Christ. You're not born into God's family because you were born of your mother. You're born in that family, but not the family of God. Well, I was born in a Christian family. Doesn't that make me a Christian? No, it does not. It makes you a son or a daughter of your parents. End of story. You must be born again. And unless you're born again, you're going to end up in a place called hell. So we understand that. You got the first birth physical. You have to be born. You're here to prove it. Second one is the, is the spiritual birth, being born again. Okay? So you understand that. So now, if you're born again, you only would ever at the most have to die once. Not twice, once. That's it. If you're born again, that's it. Amen? You may be alive and remain on the coming of the Lord. So once. So if you're born twice, physical birth and spiritual birth, at the most you only have to die once after this to judgment, as is a point on the men. Hebrews 9, 27. You understand that. Amen? But if you're only born once, you got to die twice. Physical death and spiritual death in hell. The second death at the great white throne judgment. And again, there's so much more teaching. I can't. we got to kind of wrap up here. So death for a lost person means, first of all, separation, but a lot more. There's, like I said, there's a crowd out there going, oh, we're just separated from God. A lot more than just separated from God. That's just one little aspect of being lost. Amen? When a person dies, their body ceases, their soul continues on in heaven or hell. And it depends on what they've done with Jesus Christ. Have they received him as Savior? Have they rejected him? And you know what? God's a God of separation. I'll just throw this at you. I'm not going to even open up. Matthew 13. Remember the, the mystery of the kingdom of um, heaven parables, the mysteries? Do you remember the parable of the tares and the wheat? You remember that? God's going to separate. He's going to separate. When does it happen? At the harvest. Because you can't tell the difference in the early stages. God's going to separate the tares from the wheat on this planet. He knows those who are his. He knows those who are saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it does so many other things. And, uh, yeah, we have to stop and wrap up. Amen. Well, listen, let's all stand. We'll close in prayer. And uh, after we're done here, by all means, if you want to fellowship outside, just, you know, keep your distance, everybody. Respect others. 
you know, everybody in this room may feel differently about certain things, but let's respect, assume that they, they would want to be distanced and so forth. And um, just, you know, go out in a proper manner and then fellowship outside. I don't think it's raining, okay? And, uh, but anyway, so Lord willing, next week we'll cover the second part, the second part of this study, association. This concept of hell is not only the separation, but association. With who? You saw the list of some of the people you'll be associated with. Uh, that doesn't look good. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for your word. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for our, our salvation tonight that can only be found in you, Lord. Father, we know that you're the way, the truth, and the life, and we know no man cometh unto the Father but through your Son, Jesus Christ. So help people online, Lord God, to open their eyes, open their hearts to the truth of the gospel and receive you, Lord God, tonight. Help them not wait, Lord God. And help those who are present in the building, if they don't know for sure, Lord God, that they would settle that, settle that matter in their hearts tonight. Lord God, we do thank you again for your goodness. We thank you for the truth of the Bible. Help us to meditate on this very sobering message here, Lord God, about hell. Help us, Lord God, think about those that we care and love and we work with and see on a day-to-day -day basis that are without you, Lord. Help us to be compassionate and understanding, but help us, Lord God, to get the gospel out to them. So just use us to that end, Lord God. Now bless us, each and every one here present in the building goes home. Give us safety, Lord God, as we go our separate ways. And we'll thank you and praise you for we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Lord, we hope to see you again.